Hey, hey, and welcome to the Friends of the Bridegroom podcast season three with Brenda Sevchak here on production and my co-host today. I'm Father Ben Little, pastor here at St. John the Baptist Parish and School in Savage, Minnesota, where we seek friendship with Christ in our time after the example of our patron, St. John the Baptist. Friendship with Christ uh, means uh, rejoicing to hear his voice, to follow him, uh, to be near him. And when we are friends with Christ, we are friends with the friends of Christ. So here we are. Welcome back to the podcast. Yes, yes. It's season three, as we said. And uh, we want to introduce you to a a, a couple of new things uh, as we begin this new season. Thank you to all of our faithful listeners, or if you're just uh, checking us out for the first time, uh, we're grateful you're here and part of the conversation. Uh, And the first thing you might notice uh, is if you are indeed watching this, we have some video capability this year that we're excited to introduce with the podcast. Uh, but one thing that you may not see and you know may have expected to see uh, was my usual co-host, uh, Sarah Schneider, our Director of Marketing and Communications here at St. John's for the past, I think, seven years. Sarah has been with us. And Sarah, as you may have read in the in the bulletin, has accepted a position, uh, which means that she will be leaving the staff of St. John's, not leaving the parish. Thank goodness. Uh, yes, thank goodness. <laughs> yes, she will continue to be a very uh, visible and, and active uh, member of the parish, along with her her husband Mike and their children. And so she will not vanish from our lives, which I'm for which I'm very very grateful. Uh, and the and the only sort of silver lining I think, or the grace of it, is that she is actually going to another Catholic institution where she will continue to serve the church. Uh, she'll continue to be able to work in a place of faith. And uh, so we're, we, are, we are very grateful for that and grateful for all that she's brought, uh, not just uh, to this podcast, but to St. John's as a whole. Yeah. When you see her around a mass, make sure to say thanks for everything she's done and let her know how much you've enjoyed the different things in the bulletin and the podcast and all the work she does on the website yes. because she really put her, her whole heart into it. And it's evident in her work. And it's been great to watch her do that and serve the Lord. And mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she, uh, all of that is true. Amen. And, uh, and specifically with the podcast, she was a huge driver of it. And um, like so many of our staff, our wonderful staff, uh, present company included, the, uh, the, the, the way in which uh, for me, you know, just speaking personally, um, like to kind of live in the abstract sometimes as a, as, as sort of a melancholic, uh, you know, teacher and not so much, not so great with the, uh, the practical details. Um, so, so Sarah excelled in you sort of bringing the li- bringing to life, you know, some of the things that are you know kind of up there in the up there in the clouds. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. And then in just you know her voice on this podcast uh, the, the, as the sort of inter- interlocutor uh, mm-hmm. co-host uh, these last couple seasons. Uh, and I think she never quite gave herself enough credit. You know, she uh, she always kind of came from that perspective of. You know, as she would say, being a, you know a new Catholic or a baby Catholic, right. and I always tr- trying to kind of rescue her from that. And she she gave she uh, does she deserved more credit right. than her, that. But her deep faith is evident, and it came through in everything she spoke and it's her good cer- questions. It, She's always good at asking those questions mm-hmm. to dig out interesting yeah. facts and. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, it made it made for a great dynamic uh, right. and conversation. So, uh, but that will continue. We pray. I think um, you know Brenda's here today, and will and will continue to probably be what she's. But you've probably been on the podcast most of anybody else, and so thank you to you for uh, for not just uh, being on uh, co-hosting today and and being a part of the conversation, but you'll uh, certainly help with a lot of the production uh, in the meantime. But and what's we, really exciting, I think, is your opportunity now to bring in um, a lot of guests, which has always been on your heart. It has, it has, and we want to we want to highlight more of our staff. And so, so there's the it's probably the case that we'll have some kind of rotating co-hosts, mm-hmm. and and then continue to do a lot of things we've been doing already, where um, we. Um, have examined homilies. We've done deep dives on homilies. We've introduced um, families and, and people in the parish and school. Uh, we've uh, talked about Catholic topics, you know, both kind of local to us here at St. John's and in the in the broader church. We might do a little bit of that today. And I even know that some of your companion friends might be on the schedule to show up before. Yes, too indeed, long, so. indeed. Yes, we we have a we have a uh, I have a plans to invite one of my uh, brothers and the companions of Christ uh, to join us uh, for a, a conversation and this and we'll, we'll actually this is actually one of the things that we want really want to specifically highlight um, in the in the um, in the next um, month month and a half two months 
uh, election season is upon us. So we want to we want to uh, put some content out there that that helps us as we prepare for that responsibility of of, of uh, casting our votes. Definitely so. something people are always curious to hear from their their pastor on during election season and just to hear some honest conversations about what yes. should inform their conscience. Right, right, so, exactly. So, so that's, stay tuned uh, for that. Yeah, so those are some things to look forward to as we begin this new season. Uh, but let's begin as we always do with our with our St. John the Baptist prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Jesus, Bridegroom of the Church, your forerunner, St. John the Baptist, rejoice to be near you as your friend and to hear your voice. Draw us, like our holy patron, into deep friendship with you and with each other, especially in these dark and confusing times. For it is only in such friendship that we will be able to persevere in faith, hope, and love. May we, like John, ever notice the gentle approach of your most holy mother Mary as she bears you into our company. And having received you, our divine friend, from the faith of Mary's fiat, from the testimony of John's blood, and in the most holy Eucharist, stir up in us the courage and conviction to say to a hungry world, Behold the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Here we All go. All right, here we go. So, uh, yes, again, uh, just grateful to be with everybody again and, and enter into another season and excited for the changes it might bring. Hope you'll, hope you'll stay with us. Hope you'll st- uh, stay committed uh, to the podcast. Keep telling other people about it. Check it out on YouTube or the um, Facebook posts if you haven't seen the visual yet. If you're right yeah. on now on Apple Podcasts still, check it Absolutely. out online. Absolutely. And pray for us as we um, as we interview and discern uh, who will be. We we don't say replacement around here. We say successor, mm-hmm. who will be the successor of Sarah uh, in her in her post, and right. you know presumably that that person. You know, we we pray that it'll be someone with similar gifts and who might be able to step into this space as well. Exactly. So, we have great hope for that. So. A lot to see how the Lord unfolds things next. Amen. All right. So we're not going to jump into a deep topic today or kind of a long form conversation. But as we start the season now, you know a little bit what to expect, how the season might go, things you might hear, things you might see now that we're here um, on video. We just want to start today with a little um, intro back into how life is going in this moment. Maybe something that's brought you life recently, something that's given you great hope, been exciting, something fun. We'll, of course, do the fishing report. Yeah. Um, But what's given you life recently? Where are you at? Well, certainly not the Minnesota Twins. Um, the Minnesota Vikings, on the other hand, have have t- have done that very well. Um, but Great. in 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 more in, in more serious things, uh, I had the opportunity, as as many people know, to travel to Boston uh, recently to uh, to be present at the ordination of my dear friend, uh, now Deacon Tommy Hine, uh, as the I see he's the youngest permanent deacon wow. in the Archdiocese of Boston, and uh, to to be present for his or to vest him in his in his uh, stole and Dalmatic along with his, with his wonderful wife, my friend, Nancy, and, uh, and also to be in the presence. It was really beautiful to be in the presence of Cardinal Sean O'Malley, who is the outgoing archbishop of, of Boston, uh, who's a, I, one of, one of my, uh, um, one of the church leaders I admire the most. Um, and, uh, to hear him preach, uh, to see him as he, as after 21 years appointed by, you know, John Paul II in 2003 and has served wow. a long time. So, uh, that was really uplifting. Certainly, Community Fest, the blessing, the pre- presence uh, of Archbishop Hebda uh, for uh, the the blessing of our our new sanctuary art and the confessional and the school office, and uh, so lots of good things h- happening. And I, if you were yeah. friends with him for a while. If he's out in Boston, you're in Minnesota. How yeah. did you guys meet? Where are you friends so from? So we were we were college roommates. Uh, wow. So uh, at the end of my freshman year at the University of Dallas, I had kind of tangentially gotten to know Tommy. Uh, and then um, I was getting ready to be uh, roommates with another classmate. Uh, but then uh, he uh, was not able to be my roommate uh, for various reasons. And so I was kind of scrambling to find a roommate. And then it turned out Tommy was as well. And so we said, we didn't know each other that well. We we've had some French, you know, kind of acquaintance and friendship and said, oh, what the heck, we'll just try it. And uh, it worked out as you can, as you can tell. Um, so we were uh, roommates and and have been close friends, you know, ever since then. Uh, much of his family, um, and I'm the godfather to his 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 older son, um, Damien. As we record this on the feast of Saints Cosmas and Damien, so Damien Hine, uh, happy feast day, buddy. 
And um, was that the yeah. first time you had vested someone at an ordination? Second time. The other person I vested uh, is my friend, uh, Father Luke Marquard. Father Luke is a pastor at St. Joseph's in West St. Paul. And so maybe maybe a future I'd podcast guest. He'd be great. He'd be, he'd be a great conversationalist. So yeah, that's just a huge honor and um, and to you know to be be present in that way. Uh, and did you get to it, see anything else in Boston while you were there? That'd be kind of fun. I, well, I did get to see game two of the doubleheader at Fenway Park, uh, where the Twins got got crushed uh, for the second time in a day uh, by the Red Sox. And um, yeah, a, bunch, you know, a number of other things, you know, visited some churches, uh, saw some other friends. Um, yeah, so just a, a really blessed you know, time there. Right. And yeah, so ha- but happy to be back. That's so awesome. yeah, how about you, Brenda? I know you've been traveling a little bit too, so people might want to know. Just came back yesterday um, from a little pilgrimage with some friends to France and Ireland. So we got to see different Marian apparition sites. We saw Knock in Ireland, traveled over to France and went to Lourdes, and then we went up to Paris um, and saw the miraculous medal there, that apparition. Traveled over to La Sue for a day, um, and then spent an evening in Sacre Coeur overnight doing adoration. So wonderful, it's wonderful a great trip. And, and I know all those places mean a lot to you and and your and your uh, your spiritual life. And it's, um, I think it's good. It's so good that people, you know, they're, that they're, that their director of music is, you know, is reading the music, you're reading the, reading the score of the saints, so to speak, and to, and, and listening to Our Lady. So, so we, we, yeah. Excited to yeah, be there. And congratulations I'm just, you know, on that. that. Consoled and once again, deeper knowledge of the Lord's love and that um, he loves each of you as well and wants that for everybody. So hopefully this can, it does. through this podcast, draw more people into Christ and his love and the love of his blessed mother because. Without that, it's hard. It is hard, and uh, that's our hope. Um, and we we know that he can we can, that he can do that. And so, I, but I'll also you and your friends uh, have are sort of the advance team, the advance scouting team f- for our parish pilgrimage that'll be going in uh, April and the first week of May of 2025. Yeah, so we're, we're and you're really gonna have excited. a blast. It's gonna, it's gonna be, be good. so great. It's gonna be good. Which yeah. location are you most excited for in that L- pilgrimage? Lourdes. Okay. Uh, Lourdes, you know, is important to me and St. Bernadette and Our Lady of Lourdes, and I'll actually be there on my birthday. Wow. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. But And then also uh, the other one is would be um, uh, Vincent de Paul okay. in, in Paris, at uh, his, which is right around the corner from right. uh, from the Miraculous Medal in St. Catherine La Beret. So, But we're touring the French saints and just following the, the roadmap of all the great French saints. So, With yeah. the Lords in mind, I think we can give a shout out as we start the season to our sisters. Maybe they'd be having a fun yeah, on the podcast yes, too. Yes. Uh, while I was at Lords, I was walking um, away from the baths and walking over to Mass, um, which is in the St. Cosmas and Damien Chapel for the English Masses there. So fitting also that today's their yeah. feast day. Um, but walking across the square, um, which is where the rosary procession ends each night, and I saw someone who looked very familiar, and I looked, and I put my hands on my knees, and I said, Sister Emmy, <laughs> is that you? And it was indeed Sister Emmy from Pro Ecclesia Sancta, um, and how funny, I'd just seen her here in my office uh, like two or three weeks before, and had no idea she would also be in France, and let alone be at Lourdes, and it was... She might not have known either, right? No, she yeah. said she was over in Spain um, for some vows that were happening over there with their... Um, sisters who were in Spain, and they had some time, so they popped up to France, it sounds like, for a little bit. And it was just a great grace and a great joy, and reminded of the universality of the church yeah. and how it's so big, but also it's so united in Christ and in our Blessed Mother that, you know, we're all there together. So that yes. was a great grace. So thanks to the sisters for who you are and all you do for the church. Yes, I echo that. Thank you, sisters. And and uh, that's another point of connection we have with the you yeah. know the sisters the our lady of lords is very important to them and uh and then what a what a great um sort of manifestation of of the whole uh, the whole idea of friendship with christ yeah. you know that um that the friends of the bridegroom tend to run into each other <laughs> run in the <laughs> and, same circle yeah and, and love so the same in, people in, love the same in, things in a, in way in a way it was a it was a un, unexpected Meeting, but then in another way, it's totally expected. You know, it's it, it, it's uh, totally yeah. foreseeable that you'd run into someone in a holy place like that. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that, and that uh, that lifted up my heart for sure. Nice. Uh, so, uh, with that, I will Let's go uh, into the fishing report. Yeah, maybe. so so fishing's been been pretty pretty good. I've been getting out on my on my Mondays and uh, caught some good fish this summer uh, since since we've last recorded. Uh, but this Saturday, actually, as we record this, uh, I will be doing something I've never done before, okay. um, and actually taking a day off to do it, which I 
was very hesitant to do, but just thought it would be a great thing to try and uh, hopefully be, do some evangelization along the way. Great. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be in a fishing tournament. Oh, Wow, is that yeah. is that local? Is that around here? It is, is that- local. So the so um, shout out to Clearwater's Outfitting in Clearwater, Minnesota, which is where actually where I bought my fishing kayak uh, four years ago, and uh, they uh, they run shuttles, and this is one of my favorite places to fish. They run shuttles on the Mississippi River okay. between St. Cloud and, and Clearwater. Oh. You go that. I go, go there, there a lot. Often. I go right. there a lot, and um, and I've got some priest friends who have kind of started to, to come along, and 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 we love it because um, it's a it's a top ten uh, rated a top ten uh, smallmouth bass fishery in the country. That's great. And uh, so every year they have the, what they call the Bronzeback Classic, right. uh, which is a smallmouth bass tournament. And uh, so I'm going to try it this year. I think there's there's probably close to fifty anglers who are registered for it. Uh, and the way it works is uh, you go out in your you have to fish from a kayak, um, and what what you do is you it you you try to uh, catch your three biggest fish, and so there it's a catch photo release tournament. So you actually take a picture of the fish on a measuring board in your kayak and oh, then wow. release it. And there's a little identifier badge that you want that you get in the in the photo, and then you upload it to an app. Okay. Which, uh, and so you just keep uploading pictures of fish with their length. And it'll automatically cull your smallest fish. Okay. And so you try to just accumulate uh, the biggest, you know, the, your three biggest fish. How so, long do you have to catch the fish? I think it's about seven hours. Oh, that's kind of a long yeah. time. So, so, and then, and then after everybody gets off the river and then there's, you know, food and fellowship and, and then you can actually win a kayak. So my, wow. my hope is if, if I don't think I'll win, but if but I, might. if I were to win, uh, it's certainly possible. Uh, that you know, maybe uh, I'd have a brand new fishing kayak that maybe I could auction off for for Saint, for Saint John's. So, because I like my kayak, I don't need another one. But uh, for now, uh, great. As you as you go out, as always, to make a catch of souls for the kingdom, wish everyone tight lines. Thanks for listening, and Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Hello, this is Archbishop Bernard Ebda. Thank you for listening to the Friends of the Bridegroom podcast.